this time. And so we are at the uh, section of uh, the seven limb practice. So the next, uh, it says, the text says, uh, is the seven branch practice, a summary practice of the essential points of accumulation and purification, which starts by paying homage. Here, uh, this uh, is stated uh, without relinquishing. Uh, in the state of without relinquishing the uh, focus of objects of refuge and while paying homage, make the individual lineage application of vast conduct, uh, lineage, and profound lineage of uh, view until to uh, Jir Lama Tsongkhapa. And as is well known by reciting the lines, the liberator and unequal teacher, the destroyer, the pr uh, possessor, and going beyond, etc. And uh, the prayer starts from these lines. The highly accomplished and learned the Venerable Sheriff Singhe, the omniscient one in person, Yundun Drupa, and Noble Sangpo, who has actualized the state of three bodies, the Buddha bodies, I request the three glorious lamas, and so forth. Um, and goes on until uh, I request the uh, until Lausan Gyatsu did the Lord of Speech, Lausan Gyatsu did, I think, with Dara Lama, possessing the tre tre treasure of the um, a profound and vast teaching. I request to the assembly and direct in, uh, and indirect tutors. So the word request uh, should be changed into pay homage and then. Uh, by in whatever, uh, by the time you reach the point in whatever number and whoever, etc., homage is paid to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who are invited. So mandala offering um, as a starting point of practice uh, offering. Mm, then the material, the material of the mandala could be made of precious gem or two precious materials to a slate, uh, which you, if you do not have the means, and the, uh, then prepare grains, etc., to arrange as heaps on it. And uh, in the beginning, with regard to the thirty-seven heaps, the number should be as much as uh, as much. Wish and uh, as possible, and uh, then for the sake of more numbers, the uh, seven heaps should be treated as the main, and the number should be from 21 to 100, etc., which should be offered in accordance with the words and visualizations. Um, so at this point of accumulation, uh, accumulating uh, collect uh, merit without having even one grain of offering that is actually arranged and without un undergoing even the slightest physical and verbal hardship and to claim and say that it is done solely through relief and concentration is exactly as Podawa has said. So by putting some medicinal incenses in a smelly smoked bowl and uh, uh, then if you say sandal, camphor, and incense water and thus a blind uh, be fooling this or the one with eye. While having the means to do, means due to miserliness, and uh, while having the means due to miserliness uh, and laziness, making bad and little offerings and totally abandoning it is a clear external revelation or uh, an indication that internal signs of having not achieved faith in the Dharma and the teaching. Um, these days, the, those genuinely practicing the Dharma and adopting it uh, is like s as rare as stars in the daytime and even in the case of those doing it, which is uh, a mere possibility. Um, like a biped of the land called Duda, do not mix uh, 
uh, along with humans and uh, say that uh, we do not copy such outright uh, stubborn practices. And also in the case of uh, lineage lamas and the teachings, there are many who are unable to count them systematically after the other, but uh, uh, still boast and display uh, or show of themselves as is done in the case in some provinces uh, in the land called Kanti. And so when Dom Timba was about to pass away, he uh, put his lap, uh, his head on Bodova's uh, lap, and Bodova was thinking that now my Ma Lama is going to pass away, and who uh, felt very sad, and he shed tears, and tears rolled down his cheek, and it actually dropped on Dom Timba's um, cheek and uh, head, and then Dom Timba looked up and said, what happened, what is happening? And uh, he said that uh, Bodhava replied by saying that uh, until now I have re relied on you for uh, uh, teachings and guidance uh, and instructions. Uh, and uh, when you uh, have passed away, whom should I rely on? And uh, Dromtemba advised him that uh, when I'm gone, you should actually uh, rely on uh, the uh, texts as your guru. So, um, I usually uh, tell people who ask me about um, uh, gurus, and there are people who are trying to find some teachers, and uh, uh, instead of finding the right kind of teacher, they sometimes find the wrong kind of teacher who are unqualified to become uh, uh, spiritual teachers. And so Dom Tempo's advice to Potowa is really uh, um, suitable. And so one should, we should first uh, go about uh, studying texts and then after having really understood the different meanings of uh, uh, the uh, teachings, then we should um, perhaps go to some uh, someone who is giving teachings and is able to give teachings. Uh, and without in the beginning right away considering the person to, person to be your own spiritual uh, guru but uh, to actually test and examine the person um, from his teaching and uh, not just decide that oh this is the right person I want but do check his or her behavior as well for uh, if, even if it takes days and so on uh, you should uh, really check these people well and then when you actually feel convinced that this is the right person for you to take as your teacher then you can finally decide to regard the person as your spiritual guru otherwise there will be lots of com uh, complications without actually um, being able to see the good qualities and um, without seeing the good qualities uh, that are needed for a spiritual teacher. And so in this way, it's, uh, you'll be following a very fine line of uh, 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 making decision to consider someone as your teacher or not. Um, so with regards to reliance on one's guru, one should do go about like that. So when it comes to thinking about uh, the guru's the guru devotion, you have to actually know the qualities of the qualifications of the guru and his knowledge and so forth by doing analytical um, uh, analysis in of the person or uh, checking the person. Whereas when you do the single-pointed concentration practice, then you need to do the single uh, uh, focusing meditation. So when it comes to doing the Dharma practice, it has to come voluntarily. You have to v be v feel volunt uh, v uh, call, um, free to uh, choose your uh, practice and the path. And uh, you, nobody can actually force on you the practices and the, the teachings. No one, uh, this, in, in fact, dip, uh, is about uh, your own benefit. It's for your own interest that you are actually looking for a teacher and for Dharma. And so, 
So you are not, we are not talking about being selfish here, but when you are well qualified and you have all the things that are necessary for becoming a disciple, a good disciple, then you can also help others better. And so you, after having uh, found your teacher and regarded someone as your teacher, then you should rely on the uh, person uh, correctly. And uh, <laughs> see the uh, <laughs> negative consequences <laughs> of uh, uh, not relying on the <laughs> guru <laughs> and also <laughs> relying <laughs> wrongly, <laughs> inappropriately. Um, so after having gone through these processes, then you should uh, bring up this, uh, your faith of, uh, in the guru, devotion in the guru. Once you have really found the uh, person to be convincing for you, then in your meditation, you should consider the person single-pointedly as your guru. And then when that, uh, the, the, the strength of that uh, f conviction and faith kind of uh, 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 weakens uh, slightly, then you can again, use different reasonings as to why the person is my guru and so forth and uh, using the right kind of good reasonings and then bring up that uh, the, that same kind of uh, when that uh, uh, intensify your uh, devotion so there are these are the few lines that are said in Sutra Lamkara allows to those who are tormented by hunger and thirst when they are helped by facilities of food and clothing and the leader that protects them from the harms of opposing um, enemy if even these uh, thoughts are, are uh, regarded uh, as kind uh, who can measure the kindness of the tutor who shows the jewel of everlasting happiness like a substance in the palm uh, by totally liberating from all fears of affliction by the three aspects of suffering of infinite samsara and uh, even then even the state of peace and so forth and so uh, with these um, lines or in intermediary verses, we will now switch to the swift path leading to omniscience. <laughs> So if you have the Southern Lineage, which is uh, in the new uh, revised uh, edition, you can find it, um, the Lodju Lamrim, the Southern Lineage Lamrim on uh, page 193. 193. Uh, please check the page number in the old uh, to the uh, old uh, book. So I received this uh, uh, teaching on the southern lineage uh, from Jabji Tijan Rinpoche. So the southern Lamrim lineage now by Gen uh, Gendin Jamyang on page 195. Now from the ocean of the two collections with combined uh, uh, method and wisdom definitely arise the abundant boughs and leaves, the measure and minor marks. On their tip is the ripe fruit, great enlightenment that knows all um, phenomena. O protector of sentient beings for most wishing granite tree, I pray to bestow virtue and excellence upon me. So his audience was saying that this uh, particular text called Satan Lam Lineage Lamrim actually is uh, in the lineage of the uh, fifth Dalai Lama's text, uh, the word of Manjushri. 
The Protector Manjushri is the Lord of Speech and the Deity of Knowledge who displays his wisdom, ethics, and kindness as Tsongkhapa, his teaching both as expedition and accomplishment who you spread and develop, O excellent spiritual masters and tutor, to you I humbly pay homage herein for the practice of the commentary on the stage of the path of the kind, uh, three kinds of beings leading those of good fortune to brotherhood, there are three phases. The preliminary, central, and uh, the uh, the actual uh, body of the teaching and then the conclu conclusion. Preliminary phase has two sections, the refuge and spirit, spirit of enlightenment, how to rely on spiritual masters. The first one, uh, the first one, praise of the praiseworthy says, whatever, tr what trouble of sentient beings are there, that um, you do not remove what excellence of worldly beings is there that you do not confer, think, Thus, there is not the slightest possibility that beings should escape from samsara's troubles and from personal peace of the, or enjoy temporary and ultimate happiness from causes other than the sub Buddha's powers. The Buddhas who are endowed with exceptional qualities in turn are products of the Holy Dharma, the truth of cessation and their path. Furthermore, the correct practice of these depends on Sanghas in training and, and those fully trained. Therefore, I entreat the holy objects of refuge from now until I reach Buddhahood to be my protectors, refuges, and supporters. So, read on. And then, next topic is how to rely on a spiritual master. And so how to rely on the spiritual masters in thought. So the way the uh, students with uh, such characteristics rely on spiritual masters is twofold. How to rely on thought and how to rely on deeds. The light for the jewels sutra says, generating fundamental faith like a mother protects and enhances all good qualities. It is important to be sure to begin with undivided faith in the spiritual masters. Although you should see the spiritual masters as free of the faults and having all qualities, and uh, all good qualities because of the generous times, degenerate times, the lamas appear to have a mixture of faults and good qualities. Since a mixture of faults and good qualities appear to disciples with impure karma, you must stop ascribing faults to be rid of the perception of faults. Think, in, it, is it any different from perfectly white snow mountain appearing to be blue to a mistaken sense consciousness, for example, or a visual consciousness that due to jaundice perceives a conch as uh, a white conch as, uh, a, as yellow, the fully accomplished Buddha, free of all faults and endowed with all goods, qualities, good qualities, was seen as a mass of failings and uh, errors by lekar, Devadatta, the Tirthikas, and so on. Arya Sangha saw Venerable Maitreya as uh, Shida, her hindquarters infested with maggots. The Buddha Buddha, the master Buddha Jnanapada saw the master Manjushri Mitra as an old man, half householder, uh, half monk, and with his head wrapped in the Dharma robe, plowing the fields and boiling large sums of insects gathered from the furrows. Maybe worms gathered from the furrows. Uh, Naropa saw Telapa roasting live fish, and novice monk Krishnacharya saw Vajravarahi as a leper woman. The meeting of the Father and Son Sutra explains that the Tathagata also manifests as a demon to ensure the welfare of sentient beings. There is no difference between these two illustrations and my way of seeing things. 
Thus, do your best to stop the perception of even the slightest fault and cultivate faith in even the most insignificant good qualities. This is extremely important point, an extremely important point for it is the source of goodness and all spiritual attainments. To develop great veneration, it is important to remember the Master's kindness. Therefore, think, my holy gurus have come to, for the purpose of guiding unruly and hard to tame beings, since they are, in essence, all the Thakadas of the three times appearing in ordinary form from the point of view of being free of all faults and possessing all good qualities. There are no different. From, uh, they are not different from the Buddhas, however, from my point of view, they are still greater, for even meeting a Buddha directly would not be more helpful to me. As for the profound and vast Dharma, my spiritual masters teach it excellently, and I listen to it. If I manage to put it into practice, there, there is no doubt that I can attain liberation and omniscience. If protecting me from the dread of sickness and enemies and providing me with good food and the wealth in this life is considered to be very kind, what then needs be said of the kindness of giving protection from the suffering of cyclic existence in general in particular um, and of conferring matchless enduring happiness even filling a billion worlds with gold could not repay it for me the kindest kindness of the holy guru is without doubt far greater than that of all buddhas of the three times generating faith and venerating from the depth very depths of your heart and the core of your being meditate until you your hair stands on each end and tears flow from your tears and how to rely on a spiritual uh, master indeed the 50 verses of good devotion says here what is what need is there to say much do whatever ple pleases your teachers give up doing anything that would be displease them be diligent in each of these examin examining uh, examining them in the past to hear a single line of dharma the, uh, our guide the buddha stuck a thousand butter lamps into his body drove a thousand nails into it and uh, offered everything children wives children wives subjects and so forth and possessions sada prarudita relied on arya dharma <coughs> Dharmuta, Dharmutara, Narupa Telupa, Narupa on Telupa, Atisha on Guru Sarvana Dvipa, uh, Se on Dogmi, Milarepa on Marpa, and so forth. The biographies and great masters of the past show how, for the sake of the Dharma, they endured extraordinary hardships, uh, disregarding their health and even their lives. Although the Gurus are in not interested in material goods and the like, if provisionally they have behave as though they do, uh, it is to enable dear disciples to complete their accumulations of merit as it is said by giving to them you will constantly be giving to all Buddhas, giving to them constitutes a collection of merit. From this collection, the supreme spiritual attainments arise. You should offer all your cherished belongings, and even if they tell you to do something that is difficult and seemingly inappropriate, think what, without doubt, this will be useful to me in some way, and do it without hesitation. Or if it is something you simply cannot do, or you feel is wrong, as it says, as it says, if upon reflection you feel and can and incapable asked to be excused from what you are not to be able to do it is important to ask properly to be excused it is inappropriate to leave it at that without thinking any more of it since it is said that the main way to please your spiritual master is to offer them your practice you should ascertain whatever teachings they have given you um through learning, reflection, and meditation. And read on. So we are on page 201, uh, mm -hmm. the central uh, phase. So we stop there. And now we switch to the, uh, the swift path. Yum chi,
So when it's uh, when the experiential explanation uh, of the guidance uh, teaching is done, then uh, in the beginning there is this uh, tradition of uh, doing this uh, reflection, the screening through reflection on the uh, the points of the practices. <laughs> so Namo Guru Munindraya. I pay with veneration homage to the foremost of the Shakyas, Supreme Leader, who, by means of the marvelous hook of courageous empathy, leads the heart to tame vicious migrators whom the other Sugatas were unable to liberate. I take refuge until the essence of enlightenment in Lord Maitreya, ruler of the vast waves of deeds, Manjushri, imparter of the profound view, Nagarjuna Sangha, who embellished this world. So regarding that, uh, so with regard to the lineage, the stages of the vast path, on page 3, the lineage extending from the fully enlightened to the Lord Maitreya, then to Sangha and his brother, and, so forth, and then stage of profound path, the lineage <laughs> from the enlightened Buddha to Lord Naval <laughs> Manjushri, <laughs> then to glorious protector Arya Nagarjuna. So we we have we usually talk about uh, refer to uh, Maitreya as someone who is uh, in the Tushita heaven, whereas in Wenzek, a Korean scholar of old times, uh, named Wenzek. Uh, 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 and he who has written a commentary on Samdhi Nimochana Sutra where he mentions that the Maitri, this man or the person was named Maitri because his mother had this name, so he was named after his mother, Maitri. So there is a Maitreya uh, who is a deity and then Maitreya who was a human being as well. So I'm, I don't, I'm not sure which one um, uh, is the one we are referring here. <laughs> Page number four, the glorious Devan Karashirjana had both and in brief since. Uh, the glorious protector Nagarjuna is renowned as the second teacher regarding these teachings and there were no, no teachings known to the glorious protector Arya Nagarjuna. Uh, which were not known to the noble one Adisha, one will be convinced that he is the lord of the teachings. The great noble one Adisha imparted the con confidential uh, guidance on the stages of the path to Geshe Dramtempa and after Geshe Dramtempa asked the noble one, why after imparting the other's, instruction, other's instructions on Tantra did you impart to me the stages of the path? Adisha answered, apart from you I found no other recipient upon which this instruction was addressed to, to uh, Geshe Dramtempa as he had been blessed as the lord of teachings. The widespread dissemination of the activities of the great uh, virtuous virtuous friend Dumtempa was also dependent on rising therefore. The two stages of the path in the, uh, of the lineage of the Katampas of the oral, oral instructions which were imparted by the great virtuous friend Dumtempa <laughs> So with regard to Lord Dr. Jin Namka Gyaltsen, uh, his own system was, uh, Zho, uh, he was follower of the Dzogchen uh, Nyingma tradition, uh, Dzogchen tradition of, and he was a great practitioner of uh, Vajrapani and had uh, uh, just as uh, Jay Rinpoche, Tsong, uh, had visions of Manjushri, Lord uh, Rupjin Namka Gyaltsen had visions of Vajrapani. And there is uh, a text written by Jay Rinpoche, uh, which is an answer 
Shulin Du Zitengwa, which is Nyingma Dzogchen teaching. So some, uh, some scholars say that uh, Jen Rinpoche cannot have written some text on Dzogchen. It was uh, inserted into his collected works later uh, by others. And so there are uh, such people who say that. The precious teacher, or which, uh, so in addition, Tsongkhapa also, uh, Tsongkhapa heard from Dagor Kenjin Chokyap, the stage of the pattern line, lineage of the Mkadampa's following scripture, which was imparted by the precious teacher from Tempa to Geshe Padawa, and who imparted it to Geshe Dalpo and Sharama. The stages of the transmission from one to the other of the subsequent former gurus is clear in the entry to Namrim Gurus. In addition, the great novel one, initially trained his mind mainly in the three practices taught by Manjushri, definitive uh, emergence, bodhicitta, and the correct view, while later in the King the Solitude writing, after uh, having entreated for a long intensely a statue of Disha, uh, anointed with anointed with ablation of butter and invoking, he had a vision of one, for one month of the lineage of the gurus from the utterly and perfectly enlightened one down to the Lord Dr. Jin Namka Gyalsen and especially to Adisha Domdem Padmutova and Sharova. After imparting in addition numerous instructions, finally Padova and the uh, two, uh, other two dissolved in, two in Adisha. And Adisha, after setting his hand on Chisangapa crown, uh, said, perform extensive deeds for the teaching and upon Chisangapa's answering, I will attain it in enlightenment and befriend who enact the welfare of sentient beings, numerous extraordinary signs such as these uh, appearances and so forth occurred. At that point he composed the great stages of the path at the request. So there are various different kinds of uh, leading disciples through the guidance teachings. Uh, according to the Lamdun tradition, the lamp of the path and also Lamrim. Uh, so the, the Lamrim guidance teachings is said to be uh, one which is uh, should, uh, beneficial to all three types of beings who are so the other tradition is uh, to uh, turn turn our mind away from the uh, the um, attachment to this life and the next life. At that point, composed great stages at the request of the great Abba, the worthy and glorious Sulpu uh, and the worthy and glorious great translator Kyapchok Pelsang. However, when Manjushri asked, haven't you included within it? The, uh, so, with regard to the Gadam tradition, uh, we have the Gadam Shungbawa, the scholastic tradition. Uh, we have the two texts, Bodhisattva Bhumi and Mahayana Sutra Lamkara. Uh, they are combined uh, together, and uh, these two texts are um, the other two being uh, uh, Bodhisattva Bhumi and Sutra uh, Ramkara, and then then uh, uh, the two texts by uh, Shantideva, and then uh, the uh, um, so I have received the teachings on the five treatises of uh, Maitreya. 
from Ritgen Ringzin Temba, who had received it from Brevisunga Mokcho Rinpoche. And uh, then I received the teachings on uh, the two texts of uh, Shanti Deva from Kunga Ken Rinpoche Kunga Wangchuk and uh, the Bodhisattva Bhumi and uh, Sutra Lamkara from Ling Rinpoche. And so I have actually uh, revived the tradition of uh, giving this teaching on the six texts of the scholastic tradition of uh, uh, Gadam uh, tradition. So, so, however, the lineage which was heard by the victorious Ansapa, fathers and sons, is uh, from Tsongkhapa to Gyalsapje to Dudinshir, Junzitawa Gyansen, Kirtup Chirje. So, this gives the lineage, these names on page six and seven. Um, I received fully the kindness of this Dharma from him, Vajradhara Kuncho Gyalsen Persangpa. And alternatively, the omniscient noble one uh, uh, to the noble Sheriff Sankye, and similarly after Dulcin. Uh, and alternatively, Dulcin Thakwa Gyalsen, and similarly after the noble uh, Sheriff Sankye. Likewise, the great noble being, after composing the stages of the path of enlightenment, set aside the inscriptional codes from the great stages of the path, as well as the extensive refutations and the proofs, and composed the smaller stages of the path which summarize well, without omission and essential points. In addition, in the light of the ever awakening mental power of trainees, having taken the import of the statements, from the great stages of the path. Nonetheless, since it seems exceedingly unlikely that the knowledge of taking all explanations as practice should exist, this will be of a degeneration of the protection. And since the easy path so raw guidance on the stage of the path by the omniscient pension and the composition of transmissions from the mouth of Manjushri by the great omniscient conqueror conciliates the vast and the concise and the sever the extremes through extremes through scriptures and reasoning, although it would be in, in ex unacceptable uh, not to meditate were I able to nonetheless upon reflecting that since there is a radical necessity for others. My own store of merit is small and my mental equipment is weak. Should I become one who fathoms the depth of the understanding of these stages of the path, it would be even more essential than thoroughly investigating high grounds and paths. I set down in writing within the limits of my mental capacity and number of paths, their sequence and their respect from their natures. However, one will have to learn the greatness of the author, the greatness of the Dharma, and the manner of listening and explaining the Dharma from the explanations of in the great and small stages of the path. As to the meanings of the statements, its actual author is the author who of this as well. Some assert it to mean that the mental continuum of Adisha and Jyotankapa are identical. However, even though their mental continuums are identical, since the mind of noble great being is extremely profound, how can be uh, how can the identity of his mental continuum and that of Adisha is, uh, be explicitly accepted. Therefore, the meaning of the code. This code is that since the level of the path of awakening is the root text, which is explained by all the stages of the path, the stage of the teachings, and the supreme paths, is its actual author is the actual the author of this as well. And the author in this context as well refer to uh, Adisha, the author of lamp for the path. Uh, it is akin, for instance, to saying that the meaning of composed by such and such author. So I've seen somewhere that uh, uh, the Adisha used to give uh, a teach about uh, Viveka's Starkajwala, Blaze of Reasoning, uh, often. So, so knowledge is vast, but this life is short. 
and therefore uh, there is uh, this uh, some kind of saying that uh, one should uh, the, since we have a short lifespan but that uh, what we need to learn is so vast we should actually take the essence and uh, so otherwise we see short texts by written by Master uh, Atisha mm -hmm. and uh, um, think that uh, these teachings are all these uh, short teachings only. But uh, uh, Atisha was said to have I mean, um, given teachings on this Tarkachvala very often. <laughs> so now then, in accordance with the lamp for the graduated paths or the graduated path, then when in conception, the conception that all teachings are contradictory, but non-contradictory, and that all scriptures are instructions, dawns, should one inquire, one inquire what is the reason for which the totality of the paths, which is the topic of the scriptures, and within the graduated paths of the path, of beings of three scopes. What is the manner in which to regenerate the path of beings of great scope in one's continuum? The path shared with the being of middle scope and must have previously been traveled upon, and to generate the path shared with the being of middle scope and one's continu uh, in one's continuum, the path of being of a small scope must have previously been traveled upon. The totality of pa paths, which is the topic of all scriptures, is summarized within the stages of the path of the being of three scopes, since the Buddha's initially generated bodhicitta, accumu and accumulating the collections in the middle and showing finally that deeds of actualizing fu fully enlightenment are for the exclusive benefit of sentient beings and all utterances of dharma also are formulated for the exclusive benefit of sentient beings. The predicate, the benefit of sentient beings, includes contingently high status and ultimately definite excellence because whatever utterances deal with the attainment of the first, the highest status are included within the actual cycle of dharma of the being of small scope or the cycle of dharma shared with the beings of small scope. In addition, from within the two definite uh, excellences, there with liberation nominations, whatever utterances deal with the attainment of the first, are included within the <coughs> no, there is in liberation and within the cycle of Dharma to share with the beings of middle and scope and whatever transits deal with the attainment of omniscience are included within the cycle of Dharma of beings with great scope. Irrespective of which of the two vehicles of the great vehicle, the vehicle of perfection and per mantra one enters, it is definite that the gateway is bodhicitta alone and to generate bodhicitta in the continuum. Uh, in one's mind stream, uh, one needs to, uh, a compassion which cannot bear all sentient beings excruciating pain <laughs> to generate a great compassion which cannot bear all sentient beings excruciating pain one must first generate the two convictions that the triple gem has the capacity to protect one from the fears of suffering and uh, fear of suffering of cycling existence and lower rebirths as well as explained at the time of the path of being small and middle in scope once since one will be unable to generate a forceful compassion which cannot bear other Sentient beings excruciating, excruciating suffering while lacking oneself, a forceful mind desiring uh, liberation from the fear of suffering of law realms and cycling existence. Since it is said in uh, the Sutra of the Ten Wheels of Kishnegarbha, it is said in the Sutra of Ten Wheels of Kishnegarbha, if one is able to drink a stream, how will one? be able to swallow the great ocean. If one is able to be have become a bejuter to both vehicles, how one will train in the great vehicles and the stages of the path says this. Then explain the actual manner of training the mind in the graduate path. On page 14, Yes, the 
I sometimes wonder if the four guardians of the um, four continents or uh, on the four sides of Mount Meru, as mentioned. Uh, I wonder if it comes from tantric sources or uh, I think that the, this uh, tradition must have actually come from China where they seem to have some kind of a tradition. So the Buddha is uh, the founding teacher, a uh, lord and uh, master. So of course we have this uh, tradition of uh, going through the Lama, then to tell uh, meditation deities, and then Buddha, Bodhisattvas, and so forth. And so. So this uh, may have to do with the, uh, the concept of having the emanation bodies of Buddhas <coughs> with the, the deities as the, uh, the Sambhog higher form. So with regard to using the Durva uh, grass, how it's positioned under your mattress has the significance of um, drawing the wind, uh, prana and prana energy into the uh, channels uh, in the body. So on page 15 it says uh, in the last paragraph, um, under one's couch draw the depiction of a swastika in white chalk in the manner of wheel of dharma, one uh, top of that. On top of that, one must lay the extremely soft cushion of um, Durva grass whose tips point inwards and whose roots point outwards without intermingling the stems. So this particular uh, way of placing the Durva grass has the significance of drawing the wind energy into the central channel. So the manner of arranging beautiful oblations, which were honestly obtained and set down. So Ansapa says, have the three feet, hands and neck, the fourth uh, teeth, lips and tongue. And so with the four head, eyes, shoulders and the breath are the eightfold dharma of Varachana. Since it is liable to settle in the half posture, regarding the half posture, having drawn the left foot inwards and having set the right one outside, either drop the ankle to the left one uh, beneath the right thigh or without dropping the thighs test. Uh, testicles down to show, cause the tip of the uh, left foot reach up to the genitals. Straighten the neck, so this put, uh, hold these, uh, your body in these positions for meditation. Um, straighten the neck, bend the throat slightly, um, leave teeth and lips in the natural position. Place the tip of the tongue slightly on the palate. Straighten also the head facing forward without tilting it. Let the gaze rest on the tip of the nose. Straighten completely both shoulders and breathe, uh, breathe softly. And so when you breathe in and out, you should not make noise. 
um, but it has to be, you have to breathe rather naturally and slowly. Regarding the breathing softly, one uh, should run meditation and samadhi after having counted leisurely 21 times the outer and inner flows of air. Um, breath without breathing noisily, strongly, or an agitated fashion, and the like one will be suitable to be a vessel for meditation on samadhi. It is said in the highway of conquest, the precious uh, Gyaluk uh, um, Mahamudra text on a support which is comfortable for Dhyana. Um, for a concentration, um, having adopted the seven bodily points, you will purify the corpse by the nine cycles of breathing. So you purify the, uh, the breath through the nine cycles of breathing and uh, regarding adopting uh, this posture, although some soft uh, lofty Kaju gurus of your having identified the beginning of meditations as akin to Sanskrit, uh, some lofty holy ones then asserted our faith in the beginning of meditations akin to that in the Sanskrit language. Our school engages in a thorough examination of motivation within continuum because the great omniscient Penchen Lama said, Penchen Lama said, in the laughing chant of love song and answer to the excellent white question. So this uh, text called the Curies from the Pure Heart by Lama Tsong Kappa, uh, the uh, Song Benjamin Lama Tsong Chicken has written uh, an answer to the questions raised in that text. Uh, that Supreme Peerless Guru asserted the apex of the beginning of all meditations is the thorough examinations of one's continuum, like the Sanskrit language. Hence, after having thoroughly examined the moderation, um, one has to meditate on the stage of the path of the moment, but in addition, when upon examination one thinks, this is meditation out of desire for the profit of this life, a desire for fame, a desire for eight world different dharmas, a desire for respect and reputation, and this meditation out of striving for the import of future lives, should one meditate out of desire for the profit of this life, desire for fame, the so you should meditate and hear when until you have a very strong uh, feeling uh, that moves you. So on page 21, where there is a quotation from Ari Nagarjuna, each has strung one more milk than the four oceans at present. Since migrants follow ordinary beings, they drink vastly more than that. And there are devas as if there is no boundary whatsoever to this ocean of suffering child upon sinking in it. Why it doesn't fear arise at all? In the absence of even the slightest fear, anguish, anxiety, and covering of body here, here, when you are sinking into this ocean of suffering, whose depth and boundary are hard to fathom, how could you be a scholar and not a child? 
Well, the childish hands. Not only did I and the old sentient beings experience from times without beginning until now of manifold of the sufferings of second existence in general and of the uh, sufferings of the three lower, lower realms in particular, but at present yet again the depth of an extent of suffering are hard to fathom. Hence, having uh, obtained this life, a special human, <coughs> this time a special human uh, body of leisure and endowment, which is hard to be found to find an account of great import. At this time, when I have encountered the precious teachings of the Buddha, which is difficult to encounter, should I not obtain from now onwards either a state of utter perfect Buddhahood or a certain liberation, which has matter all of the sufferings of psychic and I, I will have to experience yet again this general sufferings of psychic and in particular the numerous multifarious sufferings of lower realms. Therefore, since Guru Triple Jim, who is dwelling in front of myself, has the capacity to protect me from those sufferings while thinking <coughs> now these lines. I will attain perfect Buddhahood for the sake of all mother sentient beings. For that purpose, I will go for a vision triple gem. Um, uh, triple gem. Uh, Guru Triple Jim, recite as many times as possible the verse of refuge. I take refuge in the Guru. After having contemplated that oneself and all sentient beings surrounding oneself, recite her hurriedly 108 times, 21 times, or at the very least three times and so forth. The visualization in this context, a stream of so, uh, five sorts of nectar accompanied by light streaming from the paths of the bodies of the Guru and uh, direct lineage, direct lineage gurus on the <coughs> periphery of Guru Manindra and so forth. And upon having entered the body of mind, uh, body and mind of all sentient beings, both myself and the disciple dispels, that is purifies, all sins and purifications that came from beginning this time as well, have uh, and having sealed the body of the glorious Guru, disobeyed his speech, troubled his mind, and <coughs> engaged in faith as abuse and so forth in belief in brief all of the sins and obstructions related to the Buddha Guru. Jewo Part <laughs> So in uh, doing the visualization, the purification, I think earlier His Holiness was mentioning that when you do Zogrim practice, then you don't actually let the uh, negativities kind of uh, go out of the body, but actually light is... Uh, um, imagined and it dispels the darkness within your channel and uh, not uh, visualizing the uh, negativities going out, uh, pushing them out of the body. <coughs> so we aren't doing this purification practice in relation to the Sangha.
So usually I used to say that uh, they say this prayer, the taking of refuge and bodhicitta um, by the col by the collections I make through the uh, uh, through generosity and so forth uh, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings so when you do the single pointed concentration practice which we, we, if you wish to develop it then you use with the Shakyamuni himself as the focus of your meditation and then, uh, uh, since here the practices are given in, in connection with Tantra, then uh, you do the visualizations just as it is uh, given in the Gwesamaja uh, Tantra and uh, so forth. Mm so we are going to go, we are going through the uh, the four immeasurables Yana Tujishimurang, 
So you visualize the guru in the form of Shakyamuni and then on the four petals. On to the right, uh, Yamantaka, and left is uh, Chakrasambara, and then uh, the Samacha uh, deities uh, in front of the, the Guru, and then the, at the, on the petal at the, uh, behind the Guru, the He Vajra Tantra and deities. So, so you have this visualization of the merit field, and uh, from the heart of the guru mm -hmm. comes the ray of, uh, uh, radiates light rays, mm -hmm. and uh, on these, uh, the tip of this uh, rays of light, you have the different lineage lamas. Such as Telo Narun Lama, Telopa Naropa, and the Supreme John Pipa, and so forth. On, on top, and then to the right are the um, Maitreya, and so, uh, Maitreya, Sangha, and so forth, of the extensive uh, contact lineage, and to the left are um, the, uh, on the tip of the uh, rays of light to the, on the left, uh, Manjushri, Nagarjuna, and so forth, the profound view lineage, and then in the front are uh, one sown uh, root lama, uh, surrounded by all the lamas from whom you, with whom you have direct uh, spiritual connection, uh, having received uh, teachings from them. And then these uh, lamas, um, beside them are the, in front of them, you visualize the different texts, or, uh, their own um, writings. And so you have the five sets of uh, the lineage lamas around. And then they are surrounded by the Chidala deities, Abhudas Bodhisattvas, and Dharma protectors. And all of them are marked with the Om on their crown and, uh, and, and then are at their throat and whom at their heart. And from the whom syllable at the heart of those Guru uh, Shakyamuni. Um, the rays of light emit. And then the wisdom beings are uh, invoked. And then you say the prayers such as 
um, a protector of the um, all sentient beings. Without exception, uh, you have uh, destroyed the um, forces of Mara, and you know everything as the, it is. And uh, please come, uh, come here. And so forth. And then the, these deities dissolve into the uh, pledge beings. And then next you prepare uh, a bath chamber and then give ablution to the guru, deities, and so forth through the uh, you make the offering of mandala, which actually uh, <coughs> encompasses all the practices of purification and uh, uh, accumulation, purification of negativities and accumulation of merit. And so the first one uh, of the seven limb offering is uh, seven branch practices uh, prostration. So you imagine uh, your body multiplying and uh, equal to the number of uh, particles on the ground. And then make prostrations to the guru, deity, and so forth. So each body has numerous um, heads, and each head has numberless mouth, each mouth, number, numberless, um, innumerable, I mean, innumerable uh, tongue. And then, with, in a melodious voice, you do uh, prayers and uh, practice uh, homage with one's speech. <laughs> so with the body as numerous as the atoms of this uh, uh, universe, you make prostrations with your body. <laughs> so with regard to the offering of a parasol, it says that Dukchok, supreme or sub sublime uh, uh, parasol, uh, which uh, also is mentioned in the Lamrim uh, Chemo by Tsongkhapa. Here the author says Dukchok means Dukichok, so except uh, inserting this uh, the conjunct, uh, connecting particle, the, uh, he uses the same words, so he's on the says it doesn't uh, give extra sense. So perhaps the duke uh, or the parasol has some meaning or significance and symbolism. So first we'll have tea. So with regard to the offerings, there are offerings which are unsurpassable and offerings which are uh, surpassable. <laughs> of the tea, the prayer to a prayer to Padmahamo was said.
page number ha kung ano. So till here is about the, the offering among the seven limbs of offering. So the first first one is completed and second one is purification so as for the purification uh, it reads that purification is mainly about uh, feeling remorse and regret to whatever the negativity is or bad actions that one might have committed earlier and uh, making, having a very uh, strong determination that uh, one will not indulge in such actions in future. And it is said that if, we, if one remorse in this way, then whatever the qualities that we may not have developed within us, uh, it will be a cause uh, which brings the qualities within us. And whatever the qualities and understanding that we have will increase manifolds. And uh, when Adisha was uh, when Adisha was in Tibet, so one day on the way he met uh, a child who offered him mandala and uh, also uh, purif purified and confessed his uh, negative actions. So uh, during the purification ceremony, ritual ceremony, when the master asks you whether you have seen the negative indulgence, the negative actions that you have committed, and uh, if you answer yes, even though you have not seen it, or when the master asks you whether uh, are you determined or confident that you won't uh, commit such things in future, and even if you reply or respond in positive, but even though in your mind you are not decided, or you are not so certain, then of course uh, you will also earn, uh, you will also get a negative 
uh, karma of telling lies to your master. And um, the next uh, next limp is about rejoicing. And Lama Tsongkhapa has written that uh, having doing uh, rejoicing to oneself and rejoicing also to others' uh, actions especially the positive actions, is one of the easiest uh, means to uh, accumulate uh, huge merits. And the next is requisition for teaching the Dharma. So, Lord Buddha also, having been requested by the gods and goddesses to the turn the Dharma will, so hence uh, he also, listening to the request of those gods and goddesses, uh, he turned the uh, Dharma will three times in this world. And the next is a requisition for uh, staying without uh, passing away. The request uh, goes in such a way that uh, if you stay in this world, uh, you are the source of all the happiness. And uh, through your teachings, and uh, so all the sentient beings will be benefited and everyone will develop happiness and uh, and you also stay in this world and uh, with your manifestations you can you please manifest it with your manifestation uh, power you can manifest uh, even the same number as the number of the numberless sands on the Ganges River and fold uh, that too for ends and ends. So in this way, you could benefit. Uh, it will be very beneficial for the disciples. And the uh, next one is the life of dedication. So I always uh, feel something uh, negative in my mind. So here, when it speaks about offering, uh, especially about the materials, material offering, and requesting your masters to give teaching. And uh, when there is some positions and ranks where there is the possibility uh, to uh, earn or to do to gain a lot of uh, money and uh, materials things, so so when persons uh, get such kind of ranks and in positions, so once they are in those positions, then uh, they. <laughs> then they uh, take a lot of uh, corruptions, they take a lot of offerings in the form of material and they waste, uh, take the public money for their own purpose. So they say that they have to do that because they too has paid a lot uh, in order to reach that position. So in this world, when we think about corruption, so all the government expenses for, in, in for the people in order to help them, so if uh, without corruption, if uh, all the those intended for the people were really directed towards the benefit of those people, then of course there will be a lot of changes. It will be different. So, but the thing is that uh, that is an advantage, or actually the people, the general people are at last. So if it is a fact or if it is a reality and someone who has all the uh, qualities then uh, we have to accept and we have to take ownership of those things. So otherwise even if you offer materials or any other offerings then there is no way that we can take claim upon it. So uh, once when I was in Mongolia, I think it was my first time in early 19, 1979. So at that time they were under uh, the communist government. I went to visit, I went, uh, I went to a museum and I saw some drawings 
and the pictures on the wall. There is a, there is a monk uh, with whose mouth was opening, and the people were entering into his mouth. <laughs> so, which shows that the monks are uh, actually uh, destroying the life of the normal people. So, uh, the people who explained this to me was a little bit hesitant to explain, it, and I told him that there is nothing, uh, there is no need to feel hesitate. So, this is true if we do not really practice as a sincere practitioner and a monk. So, uh, next, is the next is the limb of dedication, then after that, uh, it's the offering of mandala. And uh, if possible, the material of the mental needs to be uh, gold and uh, uh, precious gems. So in order to, when we speak about uh, offering all the eons and all, I mean all the Mount Marys and uh, uh, mountains and everything, so for the general people, this may be the mental uh, the mantala itself uh, retaining the same size and also the mount mirror and all the other offerings also not becoming smaller so in this is uh, something which is beyond the imagination and the capability of the ordinary persons so if someone uh, who is beyond the ordinary level of course there may be a possibility so since the Mount Meru or the uh, celestial vault or the vault that we live in, uh, we have a connection to uh, the place or the vault where we live. So therefore, uh, it helps uh, since we have a karmic relation with that. So if we offer that to our masters, then there is a way that it could benefit. So if it's really a practitioner, a true practitioner, then of course we have to uh, practice uh, in such a way that we will attain the ultimate attainment which is free of all the conceptual uh, mistaken views and uh, that all the uh, external and the internal obscurations are clear. So while offering the mantala, we have to visualize the, uh, our spiritual master in front of us. And from the spiritual master, which is now in the form of Lord Buddha, from his heart of hearts, a uh, light beam uh, emits. And uh, on the two sides, the, the master, the lineage of the masters of the extensive learning lineage, and also on the right side, the masters of the profound view lineage on the two sides. So the two lineage masters on the two sides. So then to the masters of the, uh, the practitioner uh, side. So so gradually, uh, all this must the, the five of these masters and also uh, Manjushri and the Maitri also being dissolved into the heart of Lord Buddha. So having all these uh, spiritual masters being dissolved into the heart uh, of uh, Lord Buddha, this is called the Vajradhara which is the Supreme Spiritual Master. And uh, after that, even the Lord Buddha uh, himself also being uh, dissolved into the, the heart of uh, one's spiritual master. So having visualized all your uh, spiritual masters in this way, we have to offer the prayer of seven limb from the uh, offering to the prostrations and so on. The verse also reads in this way that I offer all the four continents, the sun, moon, and all the, the Mount Marys, and all the precious uh, gems in the form of uh, my merits. And the concept of the four kayas or the four enlightened bodies is very important. So if we have an understanding about the four kayas, the four enlightened bodies, then there is a possibility that we could be able to explain 
and the nature of uh, these explanations. When we speak about uh, our spiritual master as the spiritual enlightened uh, master as an embodiment of the four kayas or the four enlightened bodies, so one need to have a uh, uh, understanding about the nature of the four kayas. So these are the supplications to uh, uh, to our spiritual masters, having seen and having and having a general understanding about how to rely upon one's spiritual master. So having supplicated from the depth of your heart to your master, so we have to visualize that from the uh, forehead of our Islama, once a spiritual master, a uh, beam of rays uh, emitted, uh, and which uh, comes to, which comes, which arrives and dissolves into oneself, and we have to visualize in such a way, that, such a way that it helps in clearing all the negative uh, karmas and obscurations within us, and um, uh, the mental continuum of ours will filled with the positive uh, karmas and realizations. So having uh, so till here is the preliminary. So practices having completed all the preliminary uh, practices and offerings. So now is the actual portion, which is on the benefits of having rely on a spiritual masters. And uh, next is about the negative uh, negativity side or the fault side of having not relied upon a spiritual master. So, uh, from one side, one spiritual master is the best and the most excellent uh, field of accumulating merits. So, whatever the merits, and even in order to, for an individual also, in order to generate a positive mind, so one spiritual master is one of the main causes, uh, one of the main factors from which we could generate a positive mind. And it is also uh, uh, it is also the source from where we could understand what are the uh, perfect means to attain enlightenment. So, if you have understanding about the means to, or you know the means to attain enlightenment, then of course, so those understandings and your knowledge will be broadened or can increase. So, the uh, beneficial qualities of having relied upon a spiritual master is that having relied rely upon a spiritual master in the right way, through that our spiritual masters will be uh, pleased. So, with that day, when in that way, we will be we ourselves will be the one who will be benefited. So through that, uh, since we are entering the path for the first time, uh, it is the spiritual master which leads us and which shows us uh, the path. So in this way, it will be a source of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas to be pleased with us. So if we are able to rely upon the spiritual masters in the right way, then the, the, that spiritual master will, the master will lead us and always guide us from the uh, life and life uh, after next and subsequent lives. And also he will uh, protect us and from uh, falling to uh, lower rebirths and also even the small, uh, even the tiniest negative karmas in this life through which we feel uh, difficulties, we undergo problems and sufferings, even this will be cleared and eliminated. And uh, as uh, it is said that if we do not understand how uh, the origin of the suffering and the way to the way how we are born into the samsara, so if we do not understand that order, then there will be no possibility to eliminate the root of the samsara.
So uh, the mindfulness is very important here, and uh, we have to be watchful and we have to be mindful of all these practices, even uh, on a daily basis. So in that way, there is a possibility that we could accumulate millions and millions of merits uh, every day. And uh, having relied uh, upon a spiritual master in the right way, uh, one becomes uh, much, much nearer to the ultimate state of enlightenment and it is being clearly stated by uh, Arya Nagarjuna that uh, even though you may not be able to do any kind of offerings or even though you uh, refrain from doing any kinds of offerings apart from offering or being service to your uh, dharma so so being service to your dharma is the supreme of all the offerings so uh, merely uh, rely upon that has the potential to bring you closer and bring you to the state of enlightenment so th those persons who are uh, in service or who rely upon one spiritual master in the right way uh, are uh, has more strength or are never being disturbed uh, by the afflicted emotions and uh, and they will be uh, they will be never against the practices of the buddhas and bodhisattvas and uh, and they will be mindfulness of all their actions and in that way their understandings and realizations will keep on increasing from time to time and uh, ultimately all the immediate and the long term uh, goals of uh, every individuals uh, of yours will be accomplished through this means. And uh, uh, having relied upon the spiritual masters, so even those karmas that you that will bring you directly to the lower rebirths and the next and the subsequent lives will be also ripened quickly in this life itself in the form of small ailments and illnesses which is uh, clearly listed in the autumn uh, in the gandhava sutra and the next is the uh, the faulty of uh, not relying upon a spiritual master. So it is said that once uh, uh, we have taken or we have relied upon a spiritual masters, and if we do not uh, uh, obey or uh, obey the rules or if we uh, are in disregard to one's uh, uh, spiritual masters, then of course one will be, uh, even in this life, one will end up having more illnesses and the problems. And even in the next life, it is certain that one will be reborn to the animal realms and also the other lower rebirths. And for this, uh, a lot of, uh, there are many uh, quotes here, which all uh, in one or the other way proves the same thing. So even uh, Lama Tsongkhapa has stated here that uh, uh, the criticizing uh, one's master, so even though uh, you might be a scholar and engaging in the learning extensively and meditating and concentration, but once you have, you are against and you are criticizing your spiritual masters, so all your practices will be a gateway or it will be a cause that bring you directly to the lower rebirths.
So, Mushu Tom Rinpoche at that time was one of the very clear examples of a Bodhisattva in Tibet. And he has stated that uh, the practice of not relying or not accompanying the bad or the non Dharma friends is one of the practices of the Bodhisattva. And he says that the non Dharma or uh, the non Dharma friends or the friends which will bring you to negativities won't be one with a horn on their head. So they will arrive or they will come to you in a very simple and very cunning manner which will uh, ultimately which will he will uh, the one will harm you so uh, as an individual if you are yourself a lesser person in terms of your practice and your character so even though if you accompany a person who has a better understanding or in short a person a greater person but what you will get is uh, even only a small benefit so a great being like a bodhisattva even though he accompany or he goes with a lower person, but the benefit or the result that he got is a great one. And uh, Yasurun Buche again stated here that uh, a negative friend, uh, a non dharma friend is someone uh, with whom if you uh, go and if you stay, then the, your afflicted emotions and disturbing emotions arise within you and uh, it becomes a hindrance and obstructions to your practices of learning and meditating and uh, the level of your compassion uh, and mercy and love uh, decreases so this is the qualities of uh, a negative friend so next is how to rely on through uh, practice uh, how to learn through thought so here it states that first it is important to generate a uh, very deep devotion and faith and it is said that since faith is the root of all the benefits and accomplishments, so it is important to first train in such a way that one develops a very strong faith in one's master. And in this degenerated period, it is only the master who comes in an ordinary uh, being who shows an ordin uh, ordinary, fish, ordinary characters through which, which makes it possible for us to receive the teachings and the dharma. And it is also stated in the tantras uh, that uh, in the degenerated time, that even the Vajradhara or the ultimate, the supreme master will also come as a very ordinary person in order to deliver the teachings. It is uh, written in the Hevarajas uh, text that uh, in the degenerated time, uh, my Masters will be also uh, someone with an ordinary uh, appearances. And all these uh, facts are also proven by the life story of uh, uh, Marbara Rambichi and also uh, Jesus Miller Rambichi. So if we look at the life story of uh, uh, one of the greatest masters of Kaju traditions, Marba, how he has uh, worked hard and how he has been service to Narva Rinpoche, Lama Narupa.
So there is a story here um, uh, how the murderer has a vocat to and how he has sacrifices uh, to be a service of his root uh, master Narupa. And uh, at that time, Pinchanarupa has manifested himself as the uh, Idam, uh, the deity of Raja, in front of the sky and uh, asked Marba, To whom will you like to prostrate? And Marba replied that I will uh, prostrate to uh, the, the protector of Raja, who is in the form of the deity. Then at that time, Narupa uh, said that uh, there is no such call a protector of a Hivaraja, uh, which is more important or which is even before the spiritual masters. And even before the masters, one spiritual master, there is not even the title or the term called Buddha. And even all the Buddhas that has been, uh, all the Buddhas uh, that has been uh, working, that has been striving for uh, hundreds and thousands of years, are all still uh, through the forces of one's spiritual masters. And having said that, he dissolved himself into the form of the deity. So, uh, if we have to visualize our one spiritual master as the true uh, Buddha, then of course the Buddha is uh, an enlightened being who is free of all the obscurations and afflicted emotions. Then we are happen to see a lot of uh, faults nature uh, with our the spiritual master who is uh, in front of us. So uh, here it is said that that is absolutely due to one's own uh, view, one's own nature of uh, looking at one's spiritual master. But it doesn't mean that those faults are by nature, uh, uh, but those faults are from not from the spiritual master's side, but from on our, our own mental uh, projection. And uh, also, uh, as, this, as the story goes uh, in the history, the, uh, there are many instances when even the Lord Buddha, who is in, in the form of the enlightened being, but there are instances where many didn't saw him as an enlightened being. And also, Asanga's uh, story of seeing, seeing uh, Maitreya, Lord Maitreya, in the form of a she dog. So if we also look at the life stories of Milarepas, there are a lot of such instances. So therefore, uh, we have to think in such a way that whatever the fault in nature that appears in our spiritual master is all due to our own mental projections or the, pro the afflicted emotions that is present within us make us, make us see the problems and the fault in nature in our spiritual masters. So in this way, if we are able to meditate, then of course, uh, without much effort, we will be able to generate a very deep faith and devotion to one's master and we have to supplicate in such a way that may we be able to generate such a faith to one's master. So having supplicated in such a way, 
uh, we have to visualize that the the five different uh, the five different forms of the nectars with the light rays uh, emitted uh, from our master's hat and uh, continuously uh, fall on us and with that uh, it clear all the negative karmas and obscurations and the ailments and whatever a kind of uh, negative things are clear and eliminated completely from our body and our mental continuum even uh, but what are the obscurations and what are the disturbances that make us look at our uh, spiritual master as a real buddha the reason is that some spiritual master seems to be a uh, very short temper some seems to be unbiased or some seems to be biased uh, falling on one side some seems to be very miser and some seems to be not being concentrated on uh, one's practice and some seems to be uh, very less knowledge knowledgeable so so we have to visualize or we have to think in such a way that all these are mere appearances but not the real uh, fact of the, our gurus so in this way it will help us to uh, generate a deep faith towards one spiritual master so next is how to recall it the kindness of our spiritual master we have to visualize in such a way that uh, these spiritual masters are so kind to us and uh, uh, the reason is that for the countless number of uh, lives we have been born in the samsaric world and the lower rebirths so we have been uh, undergoing a lot of sufferings are tormented by all the sufferings for this number of years so it is only the spiritual masters who came to our rescue and who came to help us so therefore uh, the spiritual master is very uh, we have to he's very kind and we have to remember his kindness and we have to be grateful to our spiritual masters if you look at the life stories of lord buddha he has uh, even offered his own body and he has put thousands of lambs on his own body in order to receive even one single verses of teachings and if for the sake of teaching he has also sacrificed his he has also given away his uh, princely states he has given away his children and also his wives and uh, lama tisha has also in the same manner uh, in order to receive the the lineage of the bodhicitta he has underwent a lot of hotels and uh, uh, to uh, went very far away to receive the teaching so when we speak about the masters so even if you are uh, a monk of course the first day uh, when you're ordained even the master that teach you from the basic alphabet onwards who teach you about how to read so all these should be counted as one's most important spiritual master and when the spiritual masters give a kind of teaching to you we have to visualize in such a way and we have to think in such a way that uh, through that teaching uh, one is able to uh, learn new things we are able to uh, gain a lot more wisdom out of it and also it helps to eliminate eliminate the afflicted emotions uh, within us so in this way if we are able to uh, think uh, those different qualities and those different benefits then of course it will be also a step towards uh, generating a deep faith towards one spiritual master
So the the Dalai Lama uh, once being requested to give uh, Guru Yoga teaching, so by one of his disciples at that time, he replied to his disciple that since you do not have, uh, uh, do not have a view of uh, seeing your master as the Buddha himself, so even if I give the teaching, it will be uh, very difficult for you to be of benefit, of beneficial. So the next how to rely upon your spiritual master by practice. So uh, one of the many ways to uh, to be of service to your one's master is the first through offering uh, uh, engaging in different offerings and the offerings can be from one's physical we can be of service to one's master and also uh, obeying uh, and listening to one's spiritual master is also one of the main ways to be of service and uh, when we make offerings to our spiritual masters, we have to al always offer the best thing that we have. And even though you may not have very good quality offerings, but uh, we have to offer it from a right motivation. And it's also said that even to be of service to one spiritual master physically, including helping him with daily books and so on, is also a source of uh, 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 huge accumulations. And uh, how to uh, be of service to one's spiritual masters through our speech is in this way that we have to always shower praise and acknowledge the qualities that is present in one's spiritual masters. So uh, most of these practices are uh, and visualizations are actually prescribed during the meditative sessions, but even during the intervals and in between the sessions also we have to be uh, strive as much as possible to be uh, to be able to implement these practices and what to do at the end it is that having uh, focus on our spiritual masters with the combination of the analytical and placement meditation. We have to meditate for over 30 minutes and uh, at the concluding, so whatever one visualize the spiritual master on our heart, on our head. So having supplicated uh, in thus far, we have to think that our uh, similar uh, spiritual master which we have meditated uh, springs, arises from uh, that and dissolve in us. And uh, that we ourselves become also uh, the Lord Shakyamuni and uh, all the sentient beings also becomes Lord Shakyamuni. So in this way, if you recite the the mantra of Manumane Mahamuni Soma, so with such a uh, visualization, we have to recite the Manumane Mahamuni Soma as much as possible. And at the end, we have to dedicate in such that whatever the merits that we have uh, accumulated, may I become uh, the Buddha, and so on and so on. 
So how what to do uh, between in between the sessions is between the sessions we have to read the life stories of the great practitioners such as Teloba, Narupa, and uh, Marba, and uh, so whatever is more suitable for us we can read. So we will post the sweet part here for a while and we will go to the sacred words of Manjushri. So second, uh, how to uh, rely upon one spiritual masters and how to practice after that. So uh, the time, uh, the period when the Lord Buddha comes to this world is considered as a, uh, the luminous period. So in during such period, of course, we have the opportunity to listen to the teachings. And the other periods where the Buddhist doesn't descend on this world is considered as dark periods. So if we look at the periods, so the most of the periods uh, happen to be the dark period where there is no teaching of Buddhas in this world. So and uh, one of the leisure is being able to reborn in the central uh, place where there are the where the teachings of the Buddhas are flourished. But even though you are born in the central place where there is the teachings, but if you are uh, born as a, a deaf or dumb, then uh, you have there is not much possibility for one to practice as much as other persons. And as for the central, uh, central place, there is uh, different ways to distinguish, uh, to define the central from the spiritual side and from the location side. So in Indian, as for in India, uh, the central is considered as the Bodhgaya. And having reborn in the central place, then having a uh, uh, way to the three trainings. And also, uh, the one quality is that uh, there is a Buddha. Also, uh, it should be also a time when there is a Lord Buddha's teaching and Lord Buddha himself. So the present time is, of course, not a period because Lord Buddha has passed away. But eventually, his teachings are still in trouble. So we can consider it as the luminous period. So even in Tibetan uh, tradition, of course, we can find many practitioners who have really very uh, supreme experiences, and some are really uh, amazing and astonishing uh, persons who are quite different from the normal persons. Someone who seems to have clairvoyance, and uh, someone who have vision of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. Uh, and uh, in the Burma and in the places of Thailand, there are also such uh, instances uh, uh, who are referred to as Arahat in popular manner. And as it is being uh, explained through the middle way philosophy, and then 
So we can we can look upon those uh, popularly uh, ex popularly known to be arhats is someone as being explained in the medieval philosophy as having eliminated the afflicted emotions which arises out of the uh, grasping upon the person as independent and eternal. So as Pamangur Mishi says, uh, so if we are born in a very uh, uh, remote places, then there is no way that we will be able to listen to the teaching. And if you're reborn in the layperson's life, then of course we have to spend the life among the attachment and desire. So in Tibet, even though we consider the Tibet as a central place, but uh, since we have so so normally the in terms of the religious or the spiritual uh, distinction, a central place has to be uh, a place where there is the four disciples of Lord Buddha, which are the bhikshu and bhikshunis, and the two lay persons, the uh, someone the, the lay persons with. Uh, Libris and vows. So even though we do not have the bhikshunis tradition, so but just having the bhikshus, we can consider the Tibet as a central place. So uh, the population uh, in this world, of course, is over seven billion. But if if we uh, distinctively look at all those person, whether they have all those leisures and advantages than not all the human beings those not all those who are born as human beings have those leisures and advantages so those who have uh, the opportunity or those who have the human rebirth with the leisures and such advantages we should be able to utilize in such a way that it becomes beneficial and uh, again bodhicitta is the source of uh, of the source and the backbone of all the paths and uh, one should strive to uh, practice in the six perfections having uh, having rely upon such an altruistic mind of bodhicitta so if we are reborn in the lower rebirths, then of course uh, there is not much opportunity for us to be uh, to uh, strive towards accumulating the positive things. And even if we are reborn in the heavenly beings or in the gods and goddesses with the long life, then of course due to the freedom or due to the facilities that they have, so they are not uh, renounced and they are not able to accumulate such marriage so the, this human rebirth that we have found is something that we have never found before and in this during this life we have to make sure that we are able to fulfill our uh, greatest wishes and also our purpose as uh, the, the saying goes that uh, previous life we are a big shoe in the previous so that's why uh, we have such a good life this time so so this life should not be a cause that we are reborn in the hell or the lower rebirths lower realms in the next life 
So due to the previous life's uh, karma, we are able to, we are born in such a way with all the facilities to practice who met the spiritual masters. We have taken so many vows and of course we have so many commitments and the precepts, but we are not able to abide by all these vows and commitments. So there are a lot of downfalls in relation to the vows that we have not preserved. So therefore even though even though you're born in a pl place where there the teaching is there where you have met the uh, masters where you have received all the teachings but it may be a cause if you are not careful to be reborn as in the law runs in the next life and uh, all your uh, living you always were always fed upon uh, the the lives uh, the life and the living that is being offered by others. For example, for myself, having a title of a lama, and maybe uh, we may tell, I may tell lies, or I may even boast, and of course these are mistakes. So, when we have the control in our hand, we have to make sure that uh, we uh, are we have done good things. We we do good things in this life. That and at the end of the day, we are not remorseful. We do not have to regret our uh, actions, and we should be confident for oneself that uh, this uh, the present life and the whatever actions and the karmas accumulations that we've done in this person life will be able to bring a uh, very fruitful and a good life next and here is about the identification of the leisure and advantages of the human rebirth and the uh, next thing is thinking about how precious the human rebirth and uh, also thinking about the teaching how it is difficult to find and also that we have to how we have to strive forward to do the practice uh, from today and from the moment itself and the difficulty of human rebirth uh, can difficulty to find uh, uh, such a human such a precious human rebirth can be also understood from different illustrations that are presented in the sutras such as if we spray a handful of beans on a glass so it is almost impossible or the chances are very very much uh, limited that uh, one or two um, beans will stay on that class. So similarly, uh, even though we have taken a uh, countless number of rebirths in the samsaric world, the human rebirth comes only once in a billion. And uh, the human rebirth is also precious due to the fact that if we are uh, among the uh, three higher rebirths, so even the uh, gods and goddesses, even though they have all the facilities and they are higher rebirth, but due to the facilities that they have, they are do not uh, those facilities do not become a condition for them to practice dharma. So even also the difficult difficult in, to find a precious human rebirth can be think in terms of that if we pile a different grains and if you pile it upon one upon the another so at the tip of the uh, the heap of the grains is only one or two single grains so similarly even though we have taken numberless uh, uh, amounts of human uh, numberless amount of rebirths in the samsara but the time that you have taken the number of human rebirths that you have taken is only uh, one or twice so having all those facilities uh, at this time and having uh, all the uh, facilities so it is not about to count how many human rebirths are there in the outside but internally we have to visualize and we have to think and check ourselves whether the human rebirth that you have is beneficial whether you have put it to use or not 
and uh, in terms of that uh, whatever we do in a day sometimes most of these actions uh, are negative actions and uh, what the negative actions are all done with the negative motivation and also the nature of the actions and also the concluded conclusion also all the factors are combined or assembled for those negative actions so even though you might have engaged in the virtues and the positive actions so maybe the cause is also not strong enough even the actual uh, uh, virtues of the positive action itself may be also under the influence of uh, a lot of distractions and uh, other emotions so even the conclusion mind or the rejoicing is also not completed so in this way whatever the positive actions or karmas that we may have uh, accumulated are very uh, small and very uh, less in terms of the negative karmas that we have accumulated so from now on, whatever if we do not really strive hard to do something beneficial, then of course, after this life, it is almost impossible to find such a human rebirth. So in this way, we have to think about the importance and the rare nature of uh, this precious human rebirth. And in terms of the animals, so the the animals, whatever that is visible to us, are all scattered over the world, are the ones with the huge bodies and that are visible and evident to us. But apart from that, it is said that the maximum number of the animals lie under the sea beds, and also due to their tiny bodies, we are not able to see with our naked eyes. So even we are a monk and having renounced from our family life, we came to such a great learning center. Then having arrived here, of course, uh, many people are striving hard to the studies, but there are some, uh, even though they are uh, located, they arrive at such a place which is the center of this uh, great uh, Tibetan Buddhist learning centers. But then they came here, it seems they came here many for, uh, uh, for their stomach. This speaks about the number of the money offerings or or so and so and also even though they study and after completing the studies or the purpose behind the studies is once graduated from here uh, the main ambition was to go to some foreign countries to some ante to uh, earn money so the main purpose and our goal should be the uh, state of enlightenment and so as Lama Tsongkhapa says that at least we should be able to uh, bring our intention and motivation towards such an aspiration. So uh, nowadays uh, we can see a lot of persons even though uh, they call themselves practitioners but while meditating uh, their uh, focus and attention is not clear or the, the words are not clear, they cannot remember clearly. And the intermediate verses read that for uh, many lives we have uh, enjoyed the, uh, the facilities and the wealth of the samsara. And when the fifth Dalai Lama composed these verses, of course, it indicates very clearly how a great practitioner he himself is. So even though we have been enjoying such luxuries and wealth for uh, many lives, but what is the present condition, which is one of the worst? And so having seen this, we should be able to renounce towards the uh, a wealth of this present. So we have uh, relied upon, we have trusted to the wealth of this life 
So therefore, that which therefore, the result is the present condition that we see for ourselves. So after that, we will go to the southern lineage. So second, while relying, while relying upon the spiritual master, gradually training the mind, we are in page number 201, the Southern Lineage Lamrim, the Pure Garland, the book, new and revised edition, identifying freedom and fortune, halting wrong views, the three lower states of Buddha not having appeared, a remote land being stupid or mute, being a long life God, if you like these eight non liberties, you possess the eight freedoms. The five forms of good fortune in, ed in relation to oneself are, in general, being a human, as a human being born in what qualifies as a central land according to religious criteria, having five complete senses, not having committed any of the five acts of immediate retribution, and having faith in the Tribhika. Page number 202, contemplating their great potential, the letter to a disciple sees the basis of the path of a sukhada to become a guide for sentient beings, the powerful mind that human beings have attained, such a path has not been attained by gods, nagas or by demigods, not by garudas, vidyadharas, kinaras or urukas. Those in the three lower states, since there are many experience, experiencing the results of non-virtue, have very little power in those lives to accumulate karma. As for gods, although they enjoy the results of virtue, they have but little power to accumulate karma. In humans, however, the potential to accumulate virtues and sinful karma is very strong. In particular, since we, the people of Jambadeva, have very powerful karma, 19 Sorry, when we practice correct abandonment and application, we achieve excellent rebirths as gods and humans, the nirvana of a listener or solitary realizer, bodhicitta guiding all beings to the state of a sukhada and buddhahood. Thinking the rebirth that I have attained is far greater than a wish granting gem, meditate until profound joy arises in you, like that of a beggar who has found a treasure. Contemplating the difficulty of obtaining freedom and fortune, the difficulty of attaining them from the angle of similes, the guide to the Bodhisattva's way of life sees like a turtle poking its neck through the hole of a yoke floating on a great ocean. It is said that when on a great ocean, a golden yoke with a single opening drips in all directions carried by the wind, and a blind turtle rises to the surface of the ocean about once every hundred years, it will be almost inconceivable that his snake will pass through it. The following is a clearer smile simile. If we were to throw a handful of dried peas onto a wall, it would be highly unlikely for one of them to stick to it. Under the fact that one human life with freedom and fortune is similar to the peace that stick to a wall in meditation, apply the significance of this similes to yourself until you have truly assimilated it. The difficulty of attain, attaining them from the viewpoint of their causes. Generally speaking, to gain an ordinary happy rebirth, it is necessary to absorb at least one aspect of ethical discipline. In particular, to obtain a human life with freedom and fortune, as Narajuna said, from generosity comes wealth, from ethical discipline, a happy rebirth. You must have pure ethical discipline as a base, supplement it with generosity and so forth, and complete this with stainless prayers. Nowadays, since those who produce such causes are very rare, it is natural that their result, a human life complete with freedom and fortune, is very rare. So we will stop here for today.